welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly Starkey, fantasy story editor. I hope you are having an amazing day. So I edit all subgenres of fantasy. Um, fantasy is my favorite genre to read as well. So that's why I mainly edit it. Okay, so today's video is going to focus on um, how, not necessarily how to write a novel, but how to write a prologue because I know a lot of fantasy authors like writing prologues and honestly I do read a lot of them and a fantasy novel and there's nothing wrong with writing one because I know sometimes you hear agents and editors don't want to uh, read a prologue and I think that is because a lot of times authors don't connect that introduction to the rest of the novel right away. So sometimes I see someone start off with that prologue and it just doesn't connect to the novel until maybe like three or four chapters in. And honestly, that is just too long to wait for that connection because the reader feels starts to feel like, well, what was the point of me even reading this? You should tell the reader what they need to, well, tell or show the reader what they need to know when they need to know it. So if you're going to start with a prologue, that needs to be very vital to whatever is going to happen in chapter one. It needs to be part of your setup for the rest of the novel. You need to make that connection clear in the beginning. And there's nothing, and readers don't always skip it. As a reader, do I skip a prologue? Um, would I skip one if it was longer than maybe 10 pages? I would consider, my, uh, I don't know if I want to read this anymore. I feel like a prologue should be short you know, 10, maybe 15 pages at the most. Um, otherwise, it just starts, I start to think this is just an uh, info dump. It's not actually going to do anything. And I think that's the fear that a lot of agents and edit, not, um, yeah, agents and editors have that when they see the word prologue, they read info dump um, and they don't want it. And they know it will bore the reader. And a lot of times a writer thinks this is going to be so interesting, so important to the story. And oftentimes it is not. But I'm going to go ahead and show you an example. I'm going to read it to you. This is from the book Pegasus, uh, Flame of Olympus. Uh, this is the first one. This is by Kate O'Hearn. I hope I didn't mispronounce her name. But I will link to this book down below. It's a great book. I read it in literally one day uh, years ago. It's been out for a while. It's also a series, like most fantasy novels are a series. But what she does in here, she has a prologue. It's short, you know, and it's a children's book, so it, it wouldn't be long. Hers is only four pages, so let's say you were writing adult fiction. It would be, let's say you did like 10 pages or 15 pages. But I'm going to read you the first, the opening of the prologue, and then I'm going to read you the opening of chapter one. And you're just going to see right away how she connects them so well. And I think that's just the best examples with how to do a great prologue is just to read a great one. So... This is how it opens. This is her prologue. War came to Olympus. There was no warning. No clues that an unknown enemy was building an army against them. An army whose only goal was complete destruction. One moment there was peace. The next they were fighting for their very existence. It was bloody, brutal, and totally unexpected. But for one Olympian, it was the perfect opportunity to fulfill a dream. So that is... Um, the opening of the prologue and it goes on to follow this one Olympian through destruction that is happening uh, at Olympus. And then we go to chapter one and this is the opening for chapter one. Emily put her hand on the window and felt the glass shaking from the heavy peals of thunder crackling overhead. All day the radio had been reporting on the unexpected violent storms raging up and down the east coast of the United States. Where Emily lived, in the heart of New York City, the storm was at its worst. Sitting alone in the apartment she shared with her policeman father, she never imagined that a simple thunderstorm could be this bad. Right away, that is just two paragraphs into chapter one. You could already see the connection, these unexpected thunderstorms, this raging overhead. And obviously Olympus in the mist is over, it's over us, overhead. So right away... Uh, Kate is showing the connection between chapter one and the prologue. And as the story goes on, you know, the storm gets worse in chapter one. And by chapter two, um, Olympus, what is happening in Olympus and uh, what is happening with uh, Emily in New York City uh, intersect. They connect. But right away we see 
that since we read the prologue, Emily at this point doesn't know about this battle that's raging overhead. But we know that there's a battle raging overhead and the reader is, your readers are smart. Your readers will be able to connect that this battle overhead is connected to these violent, unexpected thunderstorms happening in New York City. And so that is just one way to make your prologue connect to your first chapter. Make sure that whatever elements you're setting up in the prologue connect to the rest of the novel and that you show that connection right away. You, if you're going to start off with a war in, chap in the prologue, if you want to show a clip from a war that happened in the past, make sure that chapter one, we right away we see the effects of that war um, in the whatever area your protagonist is living also it doesn't have to be the past a lot of times prologues do show something that happened in the past but what's really clever like with uh this author did she showed something that's happening in the moment so she really just has two different storylines that are connecting right away but what's happening in the prologue is not the past it's the present the present for this character in olympus and then we show emily uh, the young girl in New York City, and we see the present for her. So you don't have to just do the past. You can actually be very creative. You can be clever. You can have it show the present. You can have an actual present war happening, and then the chapter one can start off with um, another character feeling the, you know, the fallout of that war that is going on. And maybe that other character doesn't know that there's a war that's happening. Also, you can do, of course, you can do the past. I think Harry Potter, book one, chapter one, honestly, to me, reads like a prologue, but she called it chapter one. So what you can do if you're worried that your readers might skip your prologue, just call it chapter one. Um, and if you're an independently published author, you can do what you want. You know, you don't have to cut a prologue if you don't feel that it needs to be cut. I think chapter one of Harry Potter, to me, reads like a prologue, but I would call it a very necessary part of the story but you she just called it chapter one or maybe her editor or publisher made that decision but it reads like a prologue to me and of course uh, Pega says she just kept this as prologue she didn't call it chapter one because it's really short it's only four it's only four pages if you have a prologue that's long like 15 maybe, well, maybe 20 pages or so I would consider calling it chapter one especially if you are able to make that strong connection from that prologue to chapter one. You can always just call your prologue chapter one if you're worried readers are gonna skip it. And just make sure that your prologue is interesting. Even though it's not your chapter one, a prologue, whether you call it a prologue or your chapter one, is going to be the introduction of your story. This is what your readers are going to first experience with your story. Maybe they'll skip it, maybe they won't, but if they read it, you need to set it up right away. Like in this book that I just read from, uh, the prologue sets up that this is a fantasy novel. And in case you didn't see the cover, it obviously it's a fantasy cover, but the prologue sets it up. This is fantasy right away. It lets the reader know what they're in for. And if they don't like fantasy, they can skip out right now, unless they were, you know, for some reason didn't see the cover because I don't know. They didn't see the cover and they thought it would be something else. But yeah, right away, whatever prologue, chapter one, whatever the, wherever your story starts, make sure that you introduce the reader to the type of story. You make sure you set the expectations. And if you're using a prologue, make sure you connect it. And in Harry Potter, chapter one, it starts off when he's a baby. Um, and then it, the next chapter, I think he's 10 or 11. Does Harry turn 11 before he goes to Hogwarts? He's turned 12. I don't remember, but I think he turns 11. So when he turns, so it starts off like, I don't know, about 10 years later. But the chapters, chapter one, chapter two are very much so connected. Yes, Dumbledore and McGonagall don't show up until later chapters, but the aunt and uncle that are in chapter one show up right away in chapter two. Harry, who was a baby in chapter one, shows up right away in chapter two. So if you want to do the past as your prologue, do it, but you need to show, there needs to be some connection. If you're going to show characters in the past, make sure those characters, or I would just say, try to have those characters show up again in chapter one or elements 
of those characters show up in chapter one. You just want to make sure that connection is there. Either have the connection be that the characters from the prologue are in the next chapter, or you can have similar elements. So for instance, in Pegasus, she doesn't have the character from chapter one in chapter two, but she has that fallout. So in chapter in the prologue, she shows this battle and this war brewing in Olympus. But in chapter one, we see right away that it's affecting the world that Emily lives in. So you can do it that way. You can have characters show up from prologue to chapter one. So readers right away see that connection because they need to see it right away. Or you can have whatever element you set up, like a battle or a war, and then have that be in a prologue. And then in chapter one, has show the, um, the fallout of that happening with whoever your protagonist is. So right away, again, the reader sees that connection. You just want to make sure that there is a clear connection right away in chapter one. It goes prologue. Chapter one needs to be a connection if you want to use a prologue. If there isn't a connection between the prologue and chapter one, if there's like none at all, then you need to reconsider, do you actually need that prologue? Is the prologue even doing what it needs to do? You may need to rewrite it, um, or you might just need to cut it if it just doesn't connect. If it feels that if you're setting up a history in a prologue, it doesn't matter until 10 chapters later, you've set it up too soon and it's not relevant to the reader at this moment and they're not interested and they don't care because they haven't gotten a chance to get to know your character. So don't set up complex history and complex backstory in a prologue. That is something you definitely want to avoid because it's too soon for your readers to care about your story and your characters to start giving them a ton of information. I see that a lot in manuscripts that I've edited where the writer will just give this massive backstory about the story world. And it's interesting to read. It is interesting. And I'll tell writers, it's like, actually, this was fascinating, but it's too soon for you to tell your readers this. They aren't going to be interested in it right away because they don't have a connection to that world yet. Unless this is maybe a book in an already established series where, you've are, where you already have an established fan base and you have people who are going to be really interested in this because they already love your work and they already are in love with your story world. But if that's not the case, if this is the first one and your readers haven't gotten a chance to fall in love with your world, uh, don't, you know, shoot yourself in the foot by giving them way too much in the beginning and then they just check out. Because remember, a lot of times if someone's at the library or if even they're online shopping, they're going to maybe download a sample or maybe just read the first couple pages if they're actually at a physical bookstore in a library. And if those first few pages aren't interesting, then they're just not going to continue reading. They're not going to keep reading to see when does it become interesting. She started off with, what was her first one? War came to Olympus. That is the introduction to the prologue. Um, but the introduction to chapter one is Emily put her hand on the window and felt the glass shaking from the heavy peals of thunder cracking overhead. So that is also really interesting as well. So two interesting introductions. You don't have to start off with a battle or a war, you can do it where you just do something like Harry Potter, where you introduce um, characters that are going to be important in the next chapter. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to talk a little bit about prologues because I feel like, you know, they get a bad rap. People are like, they're awful. You know, you shouldn't write one. I think you should if you can make it connect right away in your story. Um, as always, I will link to Pegasus down below since I read from that. It's, like, it's a great story. And